I shall appoint you a light to the nations, so that my salvation may reach earth's farthest bounds. A very warm welcome to St. Mary's here in Mega as we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany together. It's wonderful to have you joining us, um, whether you've been joining us for a while or whether you, this is your first time. And a particularly warm welcome to you um, in the Wentwood ministry area, um, joining us for the first time. We hope you'll enjoy worshipping with us online over the coming weeks and months. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, where the flavour of our Christmas celebrations, the feel of it, um, changes um, with the arrival of the Magi, the wise men, um, bringing their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. But at Epiphany we also think about some other things, um, the baptism of Christ and the wedding at Cana in which Jesus transforms water into wine. Up till now in our Christmas celebrations, the birth of God among us has remained quiet, has remained secretive, only a few knowing of it. But at Epiphany, um, he's revealed to the whole world through signs and wonders who he really is. Um, the secret is out as God reveals his son to us. And we'll be thinking about some of those other events at the baptism of Christ and the wedding at Cana over the coming weeks as we continue our journey through Epiphany Tide together. But wherever you are, uh, whatever's been going on, whether you've had a good Christmas and New Year, um, I hope you have, um, but if it's been a difficult Christmas and New Year, either way, let's take a moment to be still and to remember that wherever we are, wherever we're at, God longs to meet with us this morning as we worship him together. So let's be still. Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We meet to celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. So we pray together. Glorious God, you reveal yourself to the world and call us to be a royal priesthood, to show forth the praises of Christ, who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. May we present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the light of Jesus Christ shines out as he calls all nations and peoples to his dawning brightness. So therefore, let us bring the darkness of our sin to be transformed by the light of Christ. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you, by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. 
So we join in with the first of our hymns, either out loud um, or if you feel awkward doing that, um, do worship along in your hearts. Three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. O star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh. Prayer and praising, gladly raising, worship him God most high. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, Star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, Guide us to thy perfect light. Mark his mind, his bitter perfume, Grieves a life of gathering gloom, Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, Sealed in a stone-cold tomb. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, earth to heaven replies. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephra, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and they shall proclaim the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who's been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, 
for so it's been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had cheered the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, may your spoken word and may your written word lead us to your living word, our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, a happy new year. I hope that you've had a happy and a very blessed Christmas. Perhaps you, like me, are hoping, praying that the year 2021 will be far better than 2020 with all the difficulties that so many of us have had to endure. Christmas, I know, has been very different for all of us. Perhaps we've not been able to see loved ones to meet in the large groups of family and friends as we traditionally do. We haven't all been able to come to church to our services. It's felt a very different time. You know, Christmas is now starting to feel quite a long way away. If you're like me, this is the time of the year when I think about taking my Christmas decorations down, getting back into things at the beginning of not just a new month, but a new year as well, and with all the hopes and the aspirations that that brings. I'm always reminded at Christmas time of my grandmother, who every year, just as we were finishing the Christmas pudding, uh, a Christmas lunch, would put a spoon and a fork knife down, and would always say, well, that's it, it's over for another year. I think to her, Christmas finished, as soon as lunch had been served and been eaten. It's all over for another year. Well, that's something that I'd like us to think about today, about whether the message of Christmas is just for a day or a few days in our Christian calendar, and then we forget about it and move on, getting ready for the next great Christ- Christmas Christian festival. There's a poem that's often quoted at this time of the year, written by a man called Howard Thurman. You may have heard it. Let me just read the first few lines to you. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, then the work of Christmas really begins. Well, our Christmas festivities are coming to an end. And in just a few days' time, we'll be celebrating the Feast of the Epiphany, the 12th day after Christmas, when traditionally people would have thought about taking their Christmas decorations down. But the the Epiphany is still part of the Christmas story, because it tells us, and we heard the story just a few moments ago, about those wise men, those wise ones, those magi, those three kings, call them whatever we want. We set out on that long and that arduous journey because they'd seen a star in the sky. A star that eventually led them to Bethlehem, to the newborn Jesus. There's always that wonderful image, isn't there, of the three kings, the three magi, bringing those gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. You might be able to see see behind me the crib scene here in St Mary's in Mega with our wise men who are on their journey towards our crib, all set for the epiphany. We don't know very much about those magi, 
but they do represent a very important aspect of the Christmas story because they show us that that message of the first Christmas, the birth of Jesus, wasn't just for the people of Israel, for the Jewish nation. It was for all people. The Magi represent, if you want, those first foreign people who had been told about the birth of a saviour, a very special event, and how they set out on that journey with their precious gifts to go and to visit him. Those gifts, gold, that represent earthly riches, that represent a king, that represent humanity. Frankincense, which of course would have represented prayer, the divinity of the child that they came to visit. A myrrh, an oil that would have been in use for embalming bodies. That gift is a representation of what was to come. That, that young child that they went to visit would one day die in such extraordinary circumstances. But not just a death, a death that would have a profound meaning on people for all time. I think those gifts can still speak to us today. I hope all of us would have received a gift or perhaps more over the Christmas period. You know, it's a wonderful thing both to receive and to give gifts, isn't it? The very heart of the Christmas message is about God's gift to each of us. The gift that had the ability to change the world. The gift that came in the form of Jesus. It may feel as if that Christmas story is now getting ever so distant. Perhaps we have moved on. But that message of the birth of Jesus, I believe, is as important for every other day of the year as it is on Christmas Day. As important for us as we enter into the year 2021 as it was more than 2,000 years ago. The message of Christmas calls us to open our hearts, to open our lives to that human representation of God, to reach out and to receive that unconditional gift of love, mercy, of grace, of tolerance, of abundant life that he gives to us. And I think as we think today about the message of those magi, there are four really important things that I'd encourage you to think about. The first is that we remember those magi followed their vision and they did that by following the star. Well, each of us, I believe, needs to have a vision of where we are in our lives and where God fits in with that vision. People often make resolutions at the beginning of a new year. And I always think a change in calendar year does give us an opportunity to reflect where we are in our lives. Where does God fit into all of that? And perhaps this year, we might think especially of what we have that we're able to offer to God as our gift. We often think about what he gives to us and the blessings he pours upon us, his generous love. But how can we repay that generous love in what we give to God? That's a theme I think we need to think a lot about in 2021. So what's our vision? Where does God fit into our lives? Well, the second thing is those magi set out on a journey to find um, the Messiah, to find a saviour. Many are still on that search. I think through all the difficult times we've been through, people have been asking themselves very profound questions. Perhaps people are thinking about God, about faith in ways that they've never done so before. There is the responsibility on each of us to ask ourselves those profound questions, to search for the Saviour, the one who is Lord of all. But there's also a responsibility on those of us who are Christians to point others towards Jesus, to do so in a way that's loving, that's generous, that's accepting of other people, but actually just to encourage people to think about that baby that was born 
in that stable in Bethlehem to think about his life what he taught what he did but to reflect too upon his death and above all upon his resurrection those magi were wealthy they'd have been important by human standards but they knew that something in their lives was missing they needed more and so they set out on that long journey to seek the Messiah for themselves and then of course they brought those gifts gold frankincense and myrrh what are we bringing to God what do we have that we can give to God the message of stewardship of God's love God's generous love is that God pours his gifts upon us so abundantly actually all we have all we've been given comes from him what do we have that we can use in the service of God in the building of his kingdom and then fourthly we remember how those wise men decided to go home a different way they took a different route they knew the dangers that they faced from King Herod and they knew they needed to find a different path home but there's a reminder to us as Christians isn't there that we all choose to walk a path that may be different from the world in which we live because we've chosen to follow God's way the path of compassion of love of service of devotion to God and his people we've chosen to follow the path of living our lives for Jesus lives of caring of fighting for justice of righteousness and peace how do those things impact upon our daily lives this season of epiphany is about God being shown God being manifested to the world that word show forth of those two words and there's a question I think for all of us to reflect on on this feast of the epiphany how are we showing forth God's love to the world in which we live how are we let in that light of Christ that shone so brightly that first Christmas be a light to people in our world today well, let me finish by reading a little bit more of the poem that I began with so the words of Howard Thurman when the song of the angels is stilled when the star in the sky is gone when the kings and princes are home when the shepherds are back with their flock then the work of Christmas truly begins to find the lost to heal the broken to feed the hungry to release the prisoner to rebuild the nations to bring peace amongst brothers and sisters to make music in the heart may the work of Christmas truly continue in us throughout 2021 that we may know God's peace and God's presence with us. Amen. Thou whose almighty word May our sand We humbly pray, and where the God's day gets not its glorious ray, let there be light. Those who did come to pray on thy redeeming way, feeling unsight, held to the Fly.
light. Move on the water space, bearing the land of grace, and in the darkest place, let there be light. Holy and blessed Three, glorious Trinity, wisdom, love, as ocean's tide rolling in fullest bright through the earth far and wide let there be light so let us affirm our faith in God which we share with our brothers and sisters throughout the world do you believe and trust in God the Father source of all being and life the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray for the church and for the world and give thanks to God for his goodness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, who at Epiphany is revealed to the whole world, that all nations may be drawn to his brightness. So we pray for your church throughout the world as it continues to witness to your Son, as it continues to shine his light in our world. We pray that this Epiphany Tide will be strengthened in faith. You'll be moving in us. We pray for our Diocese of Monmouth and our Bishop Cherry. That you'll be guiding her by your Spirit as she leads us. That you'll be giving her wisdom and discernment. And we pray for the Mager and Wentwood ministry areas. You would so move in us that people would see your light in our churches. We would show your love and your goodness to our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father the Major, I made a long and difficult journey to see your son. And your son was in danger from Herod who in a rage set out to kill him. So we pray for all those who this day are making difficult journeys, who are fleeing from persecution or war or famine. We pray for all those who are in danger even in their own homes. Father, we also pray for all those who are fearful, lonely or, or isolated as a result of the ongoing pandemic. In their many and varied situations, in their varied and many needs, may your light shine upon them. May you send those able to help that their needs may be met, that they may be able to live lives in safety and comfort once more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you led the nations by the light of a star to your Son. There are many in our world longing for a light at the end of the tunnel of this pandemic. So we pray for all those working to make that a reality, for those engaged in research for a vaccine, 
for those engaged in the distribution of the vaccines that have, have passed and are able to be used. And we pray for all those on the front lines, for the doctors and nurses, the care home staff and all the other key workers, that you'd keep them safe. You'd keep them from danger and from harm. Father, we thank you for all the progress that has been made. We pray that you would hasten that progress, that we can return to life as we are used to it in some sense once more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also remember that as we search for light at the end of the tunnel, the light of the star led to Christ. So we pray for all those who are searching for deeper meaning at this time. Those searching for you. Those searching for hope. We pray that we as your faithful people, we are able to guide them to you. We pray that they would know the joy of knowing you, of knowing your salvation, of your saving love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, by the light of a star you guided the nations to the dawning brightness of your Son, and the Magi's gifts unfold the riches of his mission. Listen to the prayers we offer in his name, that all may be gathered into one to enjoy forever the glory of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So joining all our prayers together, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for today. Gracious God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A couple of notices before we finish. Um, next Sunday, we're gathering once more online to worship together to continue our journey through Epiphany. Um, we hope you'll join us for that 10 o'clock next Sunday or later on in the day, um, you can catch up. Uh, we'd love you to join us. But it's also traditional at Epiphany um, to announce the dates for the coming year. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Dear brothers and sisters, the Lord's glory has shone upon us and will forever be manifest in our midst until the day of his return. Day by day, and week by week, through the rhythm of times and seasons, let us celebrate the mystery of our salvation, culminating in the holy tridium of Christ's death, burial, and glorious resurrection. It shall be celebrated between the evening of the 1st of April and the evening of the 3rd of April. Easter is the church's celebration of Christ's saving work and his triumph over sin and death. And each Sunday we gather as an Easter people on the days of the Lord's resurrection. From Easter are determined the dates of all the days we keep as holy. Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, will occur on the 17th of February. The ascension of the Lord will be celebrated on the 13th of May. Pentecost, the joyful conclusion of the Easter season will be celebrated on the 23rd of May. 
and the first Sunday of Advent will be celebrated on the 28th of November. Through all the feasts of the church, we, the pilgrim people of God, proclaim the Passover of Christ. To Jesus Christ, who was and is and is to come, the Lord of time and history, be glory and praise for ever and ever. Amen. At the end of the service, there'll be some notice cards of some other things coming up in the coming weeks. And if you want to know any more information, you can find out lots more on our website. So the blessing and sending out. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Enlightened by Christ and anointed by the Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Love kill with 